very, very happy to be here. Uh, I'm Tyler Bryden. I am the original founder of Speak AI, and uh, that's all here. Maybe just do a quick introduction on yourself, yeah. and we'll hop into some stuff. <laughs> What's up, Sha? And I'm working as a software engineer, machine learning engineer with the Speak AI team. And we'll be a little bit calling set up with the time, and we'll, we'll jump into it. This is exciting for us. Usually I don't do this. We have a little bit of content. So um, I just wanted to lay out what we're actually going to go through. So a little bit of an introduction of what we're doing, why we're doing it, including some of the problems and opportunities that we're actually seeing here, and then breaking it down into this sort of three parts. How can we capture information? How can we analyze that information? And then how can we actually manage a massive amount uh, of it? And we'll have a nice little closing thoughts and thanks. And the idea, the lens that we're trying to look through here is as you know, sort of the, the topic of this talk, uh, of this talk, natural intelligence means artificial intelligence. And the question of, can we use technology to, to help ourselves as people? Can it actually make us more human? Can it help us be more aware, um, uh, get better well-being? These are the things that we're really trying to understand and explore. It's a big task, but uh, something we're very excited about. And, uh, you know, hopefully after we go through some of this, maybe there's uh, some excitement around it. And, and we'd love to connect with anyone who's also interested in sort of some of the same topics. So just looking at a couple of the problems we're seeing, and I really did enjoy the last talk about just trying to connect this to real, actual, practical things that can take place. So $1 trillion, we're, this is sort of a way we're separating it. Uh, depression and anxiety, what we're looking at this is both professional well-being and we're also looking at personal well-being and what does that actually look like. And, and then we're also seeing what IBM is talking about is the total data, uh, dark data, basically. 93% of data right now used in companies um, is actually sort of just disappearing or being underutilized. And so what essential insights can we actually extract out of that to be valuable for companies? But then keeping in this lens of a company is full of a bunch of different people. So how can we actually provide value to the individual people within an organization as well too? And then touching a little bit more on the mental health, the well, the well-being part here. Canadians are, you know, a lot of Canadians are suffering with mental health and just globally one in six people are gonna be affected at some stage in their life with some sort of mental illness that could render them not able to work. Question is here, why now? And I think especially with this pandemic and everything that's going on, people are struggling with mental health, they're struggling with purpose and, and just productivity in general. And the enormous rise of, of remote work, it's generating lots of problems, but it's also generating opportunities. I want to touch on something that we get pushed back a little bit, but I think is really important to, to note is that when people are healthier, uh, when they have a healthier mind, they do better work, they have better output. And that's something that we're really sort of exploring and trying to understand. And if we can look at the second point down there, there's an idea of a flow state, this time where this, you know, this moment where time disappears, when we become the best versions of ourselves. And McKinsey actually did a study where it showed that if the more time you spend in flow state, um, it actually equals about a 500% increase in productivity. Other part here is the advancement in multimodal media analysis. So some awesome presentation on um, so semantic search and looking at text. What we're really fascinated about is looking at also audio and video and sort of holistically combining all of those together. And then lastly, just how can we analyze this data again, both on a personal level and then how it's uh, contributing to a company's operation. And can we actually unlock productivity gains, gains for, both, uh, for both individuals and, and companies there? Anything good? Beautiful. All right. So this is the solution that we're actually looking at. How can we um, personalize meaningful insights from recorded sessions and notes? And really what we're trying to you know, look at it, this idea of dark data, what we're seeing is you know, things in tables, things in all different uh, databases throughout, throughout companies' operations. But when it comes down to it, what are some of the most crucial, important moments of our lives as people? That's actually when we're communicating with each other. So really the analysis that we're trying to layer on here is looking at speech-driven communication and, and what can we actually extract out of that? One of the things that um, you know we're really sort of passionate about is building a wealth of data on communication and productivity that we can keep to ourselves, but then also pass pass through as research and basically become a thought leader. And how 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 can we analyze all this massive amounts of data and pull out insights that are extremely valuable? And how are we doing that? You can see a little bit of the screenshot on the left side: intuitive front end application, uh, some APIs, and then integrations, which we'll touch on a little bit uh, here as well too. And I just wanted to share a little bit of why, you know, why we started this company, what my own personal journey with this. At 21, after my my hockey career, I really, really struggled with uh, my own purpose and meaning in my life, and I really went through a time of uh, of depression, and I ended up as you know an inpatient in in the hospital. And when you 
get through that, when you go through that situation, you realize that everyone there is doing the absolute best they can, but there's still a lot of shortcomings in, in mental health in treatment and how we look at even the paradigm of both life um, professionally and then also personally. And how can we actually take a look and sort of reimagine that paradigm? For myself, what that really came about was the idea of self-healing. I couldn't just I couldn't just rely on other people necessarily. I needed to actually take that upon myself. And so, what I started to do during that process, as I recovered, as I worked through some of the dark periods in my own life, was journaling, audio, video, text notes, writing down pieces of paper, and just trying to understand, you know, what what valuable was what valuable insights were actually in that and for me the, the tool that i was using at the time was evernote and it was really powerful for for writing and typing but the question that i had for it was after 5 years of me logging in you know gratitude journals personal notes all these things why isn't it giving me any insights back into myself and that was sort of one of the key insights that led uh, to me sort of conceptualizing what we're actually building today and then moving forward with this journey and you know very Luckily, having Vatsal on this journey, um, I built you know beautiful front end, but that front end did not work that well. Vatsal came in and offered uh, a ton of expertise to actually make everything work. And we'll talk a little bit about the technical implementation and some of the challenges with that. And just a a as that idea, just to continue on there, not just looking at self healing from someone in a you know a dark time in their life, but what about the second part when they're actually coming out of that dark time, when they actually have the ability to transform their own lives. What about this idea of human optimization? Can we actually use technology to, to help with that process? And does technology have a place in, in this? And this is this idea of how can natural intelligence actually meet artificial intelligence? And again, something we're very excited to be exploring here. I just wanted to make one last you know, note on this. Technology is fantastic. We are all here because we love it. But there is nothing that can replace the idea of in-person you know, in -person communication, in-person connection. And so this was a big part of, of my journey, and I'm sure many of your journeys, although we're all connected virtually right now, being together in person, you, you cannot replace that. So that's just something I wanted, wanted to touch on and make a note before we jump into a couple uh, of the thoughts here. So... Not so you want to touch on it? Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. So what we're going to take a look at here is just sort of the three ways that we've broken it down. And that's sort of capturing the, the, the data, analyzing the, the data, and then actually sort of managing and then distributing it. And the way that we're looking at this is lots of different mediums and lots of different ways to actually do this. So one of the challenges that we're seeing is that the medium, Marshall McLuhan would say the medium is the message. And the, the different ways that we capture information really um, changes the way that we can actually analyze and extract insights out of it. So if I'm just writing text, there's some self, you know, self-contained meaning in that. But if I was to look at the transcript of someone speaking, there's a lot of actual information loss. What about the tonality? What about the way that someone was speaking or delivering the information, the way that someone um, you know, sped up through certain parts or slowed down through other parts? The other thing that we're looking at with tools like Evernote, with tools like Notion, like people are trying to capture inspiration. They're trying to capture data in different ways. And there's actually a lot of challenges with that. If you are you know, having a, you know, a thought session, you're working through a bunch of things, you might start in your apartment, but then you might uh, go for a walk. And as you're on a walk, you might have a little more moment of inspiration where you want to record an audio note, or maybe you just type a note. And what information are we actually losing in that process? Geolocation signals, um, the speed that we're walking, all these different things have an impact on sort of who we are at that moment, the consciousness that we have, and the insights that we could actually extract from people going through this process. And I'll touch on, Jenny, just a couple other things, and that's what feel encouraged to jump in, just like accessibility and device compatibility challenges. So, you know, it's great when you have an internet connection and you're in a perfect spot and, and you can record everything and send it up to the cloud and analyze it. But what if you're just uh, operating no internet connection? Some of the best moments come when we're in nature, out in the woods. So how can you actually capture information there, maintain its decency and quality, and then put it back uh, into the system once you're actually back to the internet connection? Oh, sure. yeah. Yep, just to echo on that, like how we are capturing the various type of data, uh, either it can be on the web app, either you can use the Android iOS app, and we are also working on to capture the local data through the couple of hardwares and which you can put into your home and it will, it might record your voice whenever you want to just maintain the privacy and security piece over there. And we, we can have all the data into the system which you can navigate through, find those moments. And as Tyler mentioned, that you might miss those inspirational moments if you are going for a walk or going for a run or like working on something else. So we just want to make sure we capture all the uh, like, you know, possible inputs through the variety of uh, infrastructure we do have nowadays. Yeah. 
and I think just to add on that, we have, you know, we're looking at multimodal analysis. There are a lot of things now people are using, for example, the Muse device to do EEG. There's so many different inputs that we actually have. And when we break down, for example, just voice, there's a couple different ways that we look at it. And we'll hop onto that on in a couple slides here. Um, I think this is a part that's really fascinating for us as well, too, especially when we talk about well-being, when we talk about productivity, and then also just awareness. How can we interact with this technology in real time versus uh, taking a video and then uploading it for post-processing after? And there's some really cool things that you can do with, for example, audio recording and then real-time speech-to-text and then using keyword triggers or customizable phrases that allow you to manipulate information and allow you to manipulate actions. And that's something that we're really excited to explore and just the idea of, is there a way for someone to actually use this technology, this real-time piece to actually heal themselves in real time or give them insights about themselves, whether communicating, whether trying to become more aware or just trying to become more mentally well when they're maybe going through a difficult period. These are some of the things we're really excited about. You can see in this video that's been post-processed, we're actually layering some sentiment analysis on it, charting it, and then you can see sentence by sentence the positivity and negativity and then navigate through to those specific moments. Um, I just want to touch on a couple things that we're seeing here. There are some challenges and no doubt there's a couple people who touched on this. Like language, uh, first of all, just accuracy. Are we transcribing everything right? Is speech to text actually accurate? And what we're seeing is just even bias in the own systems that were built. So if we have a, you know, an instance of what we can do is actually chart and say, here's your top 10 most positive or negative sentences um, from, for example, 40 minute recording. And that seems really, really valuable. But now we're getting people, for example, in the mental health field who are looking at our technology and want to use it. And what if we aren't accurately identifying those moments and we're actually getting them to overlook things that are actually really valuable or the information that we're actually surfacing is a, is a false positive. I'm not sure if you have anything yep. good there. Um, and I think just that goes along with it. It's just the risks of, of decisions being made on inaccurate information. And that's something that scares me. And I think, you know, some of the talks tonight have shown there's a lot of work that needs to be done around making sure your data actually is clean. For us, if you're actually using sort of a, this front end application in journaling, are you actually typing and recording the information yourself? Or for example, did you copy and paste from a bookmark? And then all of a sudden the analysis that's layering is not actually looking at just you, it's looking at information that someone else wrote and that could be then jumbled up with all the data and the analysis and insights that you're getting back on yourself. I just wanted to break down a little bit of the way that people are actually looking at uh, just, for example, audio and how they're doing it. So this is Winterlight Labs here in Toronto, a fantastic company. And what they're doing is actually looking at Alzheimer and dementia. And this is how they're actually breaking it down to understand, you know, basically if someone is moving towards dementia or if they're progressing in that illness or if they're even coming back. And you can see just how sophisticated they are at looking at that and they're breaking it into two sides, so, you know, the acoustic analysis of what, you know, what the sound, bit, what's happening in sounds, for example, the, the unfilled pause there. And then they're also looking at the linguistic side, which are, what are the words that are being used? How can they categorize those words? And even for example, you know, word level repetition. So one of the things that they realized is that when, when someone's declining in their memory and cognitive power, they, they'll stop referring to someone by their name and they'll just start to, for example, use her or they. And just simple, small, subtle shifts like that can be powerful indicators of someone declining. On a more of a well-being and a, and a mental health basis, this is one of the things that has been clinically validated. It was an amazing research study that showed when people used absolutist terms, it showed that they were no longer in a temporary state they could, they, they, for example, COVID's come, co the world is always going to be this way. I'm a complete loser and I'm never going to change. When people start to shift into that mindset, that these terms actually start to surface. And these can actually be much more accurate indicators of, for example, someone going through um, depression and anxiety and suicidal ideation um, than things we've ever had before. So very, very powerful, sophisticated technology that can actually pull this information out both post-processed, but then now what we're looking at in real time to actually give contextual cues to both a treatment provider, but then also uh, a patient as well too. Just to, just to touch on that, like how, how we are solving this problem. So like we had like gathered and like building our own data set 
uh, to categorize all these uh, you know functions and find out like where does this fit so what we found is like we found like the two to three different categories where we are like identifying people's text audio or video into the words they are using pronunciation they are using the functions what they are using and putting into the like the the formal categories and the formal categories like the research says that it's aligned with they might be depressed or they might be like you know something bad happened uh, in, in in their life and like the another thing is like if this is like the analytics uh writing it says that it is more about they are thinking about the business or something related to the uh related to the analysis which says that this they are using more numbers and the words with respect to that so this is how we are implementing into the system right now uh, through the data set we have gathered and working on building our own data set to categorize the words into the different pronunciation words and the function words yeah. Yeah, and I'd add to that, like we, one of the, the one of the awesome presenters talked about named entity recognition. And when you layer that together with sentiment analysis, then all of a sudden there's connections could, can be made. So someone talking about a location that affects them negatively or a person that then leaves them in a bad mood. So this is sort of the part of managing this. Like we're dealing with too much information. There is no doubt about that. And so how can we actually process that? And some of us here, most likely we love looking at data. I love looking at this stuff. But the question that we often get in our dashboard is, okay, Okay, great. You can see on the slide there, for example, someone says life savings, they said it three times, but what does that actually mean? So how can we actually get past the level of just showing data and maybe just analytics and actually give valuable, unforgettable, life-changing insights? And that's the quest that we're actually on here with the, with the system that we're building. Um, I think, you know, another one that we're really excited about and their semantic search was, uh, that was an awesome presentation, is like when the data is analyzed properly and we actually layer these pieces on, that's when this deep search potential emerges. And for my, you know, for myself and for many people who are, you know, on this journey to capture inspiration, to sort of tap into their stream of consciousness and capture those moments in a, in a, a very nice way and then be able to go and pull those, retrieve those back out and then, you know, use them at any moment. That is such a powerful, exciting part of what we're looking on. And now if I look back for, you know, for example, on those five years of Evernote, how can we analyze that and pull out patterns? Can I do heat waves across multiple months and years? Can I see, you know, moments that were connected to locations that showed that they were uh, negatively or positively impacting my mood? And I think, you know, maybe just a couple other things there is like, it's really hard to change someone's behavior, change someone's uh, mindset, and, and especially with self-improvement, um, this level of awareness that we're trying to help people with. So how can we actually connect with existing workflows? So one of the things that we've been you know, building out through the system is basically integration. So for example, Zapier, we can hook into Google Drive and we can hook into Zoom. So every single time that you do a Zoom call, audio video is captured, thrown into Google Drive, and then analyzed in our system. But then there's all the challenges that come for that, because if you're layering analysis on someone else who is talking, then you're not actually getting accurate insights about yourself and you're getting insights about other people. So these are where all these challenges, both scary, but very exciting, actually emerge. And again, a lot of work is actually being done um, to go uh, go through those. And then I think just lastly, is like, how can we identify and navigate to the moments that matter? This webinar here was, you know, we're going to be at two hours by the end of it. What moments matter to you? How can you search through this media? How can you not look at just the thumbnails to try to find the moments? How can you actually use the, the powerful deep search and then click and navigate? And that's sort of what we're showing on that laptop screenshot there. You see the keyword, you see how many instances are there, you hit and you navigate to those specific moments. So seamlessly navigate and get through the mo to the moments that matter in, in media and the information and hopefully, again, increase this idea of awareness, well-being and productivity. Good. So we can we did good. Yeah. We moved in quick. All right, good. All right. So closing thoughts. You know, we you know we just thank you for having us here, Adam. This is really really exciting. This was this is the first one we've actually attended, but it was a wonderful um, you know just load of information. I'm very very excited about uh, what we actually learned today, and hopefully this maybe opens up um, some some ideas in your mind of like what's possible with technology and actually implementing it in a practical way that can actually be positive for people and positive for the world. That's something that we're you know, deeply, deeply excited about. Anyone feel encouraged to connect with us? Uh, I did a, a little spam comment up at the start.
start of this, and then I think we'll throw a slide up here at the end as well too. I think just this idea of like we're we're all searching for meaning one way or another, whether it's in your personal life and your professional life. We all want to live more purposeful, meaningful lives. We all want to be more effective in our personal lives and our professional lives. You know, how can we actually use technology to do that? And and just together as a community, how can we actually? Uh, use technology for good. I'll, uh, I'll put this just one last thing up here. Just connect with us. I'm um, really trying to, again, center our, our, our company and the work we're down around nature and this idea of, yes, how can we actually combine, combine natural intelligence uh, and artificial intelligence? So feel encouraged to connect with us. We're being very transparent with what we're doing. So we've thrown up an Indie Hackers uh, page so you can follow your journey. And just, you know, Adam, thank you uh, again for letting us do this. Speak AI, transformational technology for your awareness, well-being, and productivity. Uh, and thank you. Thank you.